Throughout history, influential spiritual figures with the power to sway public opinion have often been sought after by autocratic leaders like Vladimir Putin. These individuals, with their ability to mold minds and shape beliefs, become invaluable assets in political affairs. Among such figures is Vladimir Mikhailovich Gundayev, better known as Patriarch Kirill of Moscow. His story starts in 1946 in Leningrad, now known as St. Petersburg. From a young age, Kirill was drawn to religious pursuits leading to his rapid rise within the Russian Orthodox Church, an institution deeply associated with the Russian state. In the midst of the Soviet era, Kirill's path took a turn and his journey was about to intersect with the world of international politics and espionage. In 1971, the 24-year-old Gundayev was granted an unusual opportunity for a clergyman of his age. He was sent to Geneva to represent the Russian Orthodox Church at the World Council of Churches. This was a strong sign of his rising status within the church. Swiss newspaper Tages Anzeiger, who had gained access to declassified files of the Swiss Federal Police from 1969 to 1989, made a starting claim. While in Geneva, Gundayev worked for the Soviet Union's intelligence agency, the KGB, under the alias Mikhailov. His alleged mission to influence the World Council of Churches in a manner favorable to the Soviet Union, including efforts to soften criticism of the USSR's religious policies and to gather intelligence on the Council's members. Sources speaking anonymously to the newspapers described interactions with Kirill that felt information-driven despite his friendly demeanor. These accounts painted a picture of a man who was skilled at managing both his religious responsibilities and collecting intelligence. The Russian Orthodox Church remained silent on the matter, neither confirming nor denying Kirill's alleged espionage activities. Kirill himself only stated that he has special feelings for Switzerland, and his nephew Mikhail Gundayev insisted that his uncle was not a KGB agent. Look, if Kirill's nephew said so, then it must be true. However, the investigation by Switzerland's Sontag, Zeitung and Le Matin Dimanche seemed to confirm the initial claims. Kirin, a figure of intelligence, charisma and ambition, appeared to be more than just a religious leader. His unique qualities made him an ideal candidate for a covert agent of the KGB, or as his nephew might put it, a servant of God with a hidden agenda. After the return to the USSR, he quickly advanced up the church hierarchy. And on November 13, 1989, Kirill was appointed the chairman of the Department for External Church Relations. This was part of the Russian Orthodox Church that dealt with matter outside the church. In 1991, Kirill got a spiritual promotion to Metropolitan and got involved in the holy business of humanitarian aid, or as it turned out, humanitarian imports of cigarettes and alcohol. As journalists of the newspaper Kommersant and Moskovsky Komsomolets accused Kirin of profiteering and abusing the privilege of duty-free importation of cigarettes granted to the church and dubbed him Topakko Metropolitan. It seems Kirill missed the Sunday school lesson where they said thou shalt not deal in duty-free smokes, despite the fact that orthodoxy considers smoking to be a sin. By 2004, a sociologist Nikolai Mitrokhin estimated Kirill's cigarette crusade to profit an astounding $1.5 billion and at $4 billion by the Moscow News in 2006. The duty-free importation of cigarettes granted to the church ended in 1997, and in his 2002 interview with Izvestia, Kirill called the allegations about his profiteering as mere political smoke rings. See what I did there? 
Smoke rings. No. Okay. In 2012, Kirill faced controversy over a Swiss Breguet watch valued at over $30,000. Initially denying he ever wore it, Kirill later admitted to owning the watch after a photo suggested otherwise. This led to scrutiny over his wristwear in various photographs. One image on his official website even showed the watch airbrushed out, leaving its reflection on a glossy surface. The Russian church admitted to the photo manipulation and called it an unauthorized initiative of a junior employee. In 2015, he sent his representatives to deliver a letter to Russian servicemen at Russia's Khmeimin Air Base in Syria. The letter claimed that Russian troops in Syria are to deliver peace and love. Patriarch Kirill is supporting the war in fact. Kirill, in an Orwellian style, declared Russia's war crimes and bombings of civilians in Syria as a just struggle. In 2016, Kirill labeled same-sex marriages as totalitarianism, suggesting they pose a threat to humanity and are a sign of apocalypse. Then, in May 2017, he connected marriage equality to Nazi Germany, a classic Russian technique used to discredit opposing viewpoints. Patriarch Kirill has been a vocal advocate for banning Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia since the 90s. In 2017, under his leadership, the ban on 170,000 Jehovah's Witnesses was implemented, leading to mass persecution. People are being arrested, people are being jailed, their houses are being raided. But most importantly, Kirill shares a close, mutually beneficial relationship with President Putin. They have regular meetings and Putin, self-identifying as an Orthodox Christian, is often seen at religious events and even claims Kirill's father baptized him. Так вот, меня крестили в Ленинграде, сегодня в Петербурге, в Преображенском соборе. Я ему говорю, знаете что? Похоже, ваш отец меня крестил. In return for Putin's endorsement, Kirill has consistently supported him. He described his rule as a miracle from God, which makes you wonder about the definition of miracle in the dictionary of the Russian Orthodox Church. It means we can't talk about those kinds of things. Okay. He has backed his re-elections by conducting special honoring prayer ceremonies, as well as supporting foreign policy actions like the intervention in Syria. Despite Russia's invasion in Donbas and Russia's occupation of Crimea, during which Putin threatened to use nuclear weapons in case of resistance to the Russians, Kirill said that Russia poses no military threat to absolutely anyone. Putin returned the favor by proposing him as a peace negotiator for Ukraine, because why not have a priest slash KGB agent as a mediator of your war crimes? Kirill's support extended to the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022. He aligned with Russian state narratives and endorsed military actions. He portrayed the conflict as a cultural war between traditionalist Russia and a liberal and decadent West criticizing Western values like consumerism and homosexuality. Because you know that nothing says traditional values like tanks and troops and guns and weapons and bombs. In May 2022, Patriarch Kirill was proposed for EU sanctions due to the Ukraine invasion, but Putin played the Viktor Orban card and he was removed from the list after intervention by Hungary. But several Orthodox churches distanced themselves from Kirill, citing his stance on the invasion. On победы молитва обретала уже пропагандистское такое значение. Despite global criticism, Kirill continued to endorse military mobilization and voiced support for the annexation of Donbas in 2023. This alliance with Putin has seemingly brought Kirill great material wealth. Forbes reported Kirill's wealth 
at 4 billion in 2006, with estimates up to 8 billion in 2019. He owns three properties in Moscow and St. Petersburg under his name with an overall value of almost $1.2 million. But the 2020 investigation revealed that his relatives owned significant real estate in Russia. It is also known that he has a personal plane and at least one villa in his beloved Switzerland. And although the full scale of his wealth is not known, it is believed to be much higher than what investigators have uncovered so far. Kirill's journey from modest beginnings to a major figure in the Russian Orthodox Church is a tale of power and influence, tied to the KGB, involved in politics and business, and with vast wealth, Kirill is more than a spiritual leader. His alliance with Putin and firm stances on international matters reveal his significant role in shaping Russia. Kirill is more than a patriarch. He is a central figure in Russia's political landscape, playing a crucial role in Putin's rule. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Kremlin Files. And for now, I say goodbye to you, my friends. We'll meet again soon.